I'm Scott Al Miller. It is the 14th of February, 2023. This is my vlog of daily life living in Nicaragua. And today we're doing something really exciting. We are packing up and we are heading to the island of Ometepe. Let's get started. <music> We have a pretty big adventure today because we are traveling really far and we're doing so by bus. We had a couple of options and I actually want to mention that right as we get started. So basically this whole day is going to be about travel. So that is what today's update is. Uh, and I'm scrambling to do this because I have to do it from the island and there's very little internet. So doing my best to get the show for you. Uh, but the, the whole day is the topic and the topic is travel. To Ometepe. First of all, if you don't know what Ometepe is, the giant lake in Nicaragua, Lake Nicaragua, uh, or Lago Cosibolsa, is uh, the largest lake in um, all of Latin America, I believe, and one of the largest in the world. Uh, it is not super deep, but is a giant volcanic uh, lake in southern Nicaragua. <clears throat> really, really interesting, very worth seeing, an important part of the country and the region and uh, one of the major tourist attractions. In that lake is one of the most important lake islands in the world. It is a dual volcano uh, island with an, about 50,000 inhabitants. It used to have an airport, but it is now reachable only by ferry. Uh, and so it is pretty remote. It is very quiet. It is where I'm filming right now. Obviously we made it and uh, it is a major tourist destination, but it's so hard to get to that not actually that many people really come here and those who do are often only here for one or two days. So it does it is not as full of tourists as you would expect it to be. It is not as full as you would expect it to be, but it does have an awful lot of people living on it. So it has its own uh, villages and culture and history and activities and lifestyle and everything. So it is, it is a world apart even within Nicaragua and many Nicaraguans never get a chance to come here. So uh, even for Nicaraguans, this is a major important tourist destination um, up there with the Corn Islands as things that people just really, it's, it's a very special thing to be able to go to. So today, Dominic and I, who have not been here for eight years, Marcella, who has not been here for uh, 11 years, and Chris, who's never been here, are all heading out uh, to the island, and we talked about how we wanted to get there. And of course, we could drive ourselves to the ferry, but then we have to park our car, and Paul and the kids are without the car, so we didn't want to do that. Um, plus, I just don't want to drive, and it costs money, and like, it's, why? Um, there is the public bus, of course. There's a public bus everywhere in Nicaragua, and that is the uh, affordable option. And then there is, um, I'm sure there's other options. You could always hire a private taxi, private car, all kinds of things. Uh, the Ishimche bus, and I'm going to put their contact information down below. Now, we decided to go with the public bus because there's four of us, and the entire way on the public bus is somewhere in the vicinity of $5. And we remember, we're coming from Leon. So if you're wondering how this works, I'll explain it in a second. But the Ashimche bus is a private shuttle, uh, very comfortable, takes you directly where you need to go. They handle your luggage. They'll pick you up at home, all kinds of great things. From Leon to San Jorge, which is the ferry terminal near Rivas uh, on the lake, for them is $35. So it's, it's quite a bit more expensive in uh, relative terms. It is seven times the cost, but it is a luxury service and very nice and $35 is very affordable. And if you're on vacation or you're looking for that luxury experience, absolutely worth it. They're great people, love using them. And they're who I've used to go to San Jorge previously, to go to San Juan del Sur, to go to Guatemala and El Salvador. Uh, and now they do a, quite a few routes in Honduras. So um, I think that they're way more useful when you're crossing borders. And that's really what their, uh, uh, their, their business plan is around. But they do offer, because they're based in Leon, they do offer a lot of shuttles around Nicaragua. So knowing them uh, and, and knowing how to use them and reach them and everything makes a lot of sense. So they are contacting via WhatsApp, and I will do my best to have their link down below. I do really recommend that if you're interested, reach out and use them. Uh, let them know that uh, you learned about them on this channel. They do know me because I use them a bit, and I've never had anything but a wonderful experience with them. But we wanted to save some money. There are four of us, uh, and so we decided to go on the public bus. Plus, I decided this would be much more of a video adventure for you guys. Like, taking a private shuttle is interesting to see, but it's real fast. Like, we got on the shuttle, we got off at the ferry, and it cost us much. But with the public bus, it's a little bit more interesting. We had to uh, get a ride to the terminal in Leon, but we have Paul and we have our own car, so getting dropped off there was easy. Our adventure of getting out to Ometepe starts here at Leon's bus station. This is the Uca terminal. 
I'm gonna show it behind me. These are the buses heading to Managua. So this is actually pretty easy. You just come out here, take a taxi or a tricyclo or whatever, walk here if you're downtown. It's a bit of a far walk, but you can do it. We're all here waiting for the bus. The first bus was full, so we got to wait a little bit, but we grabbed snacks for the bus. Uh, just some simple chips and stuff, yucca chips, plantain chips, some of them with chili. So I grabbed a video of them adding chili to the chips. This is the way that locals tend to eat it, but it's very messy. I don't like to do that. Sorry for all the noise. I don't have the microphone on. I'm just using the camera, but I wanted to be able to grab this quickly. So we're waiting for the bus right now. We're gonna be getting onto the mini bus. That's the High Speed Express Uka bus heading to Managua where we're gonna change actually to a different bus terminal, and then we're gonna get the bus heading to uh, Rivas and San Jorge where we'll catch the ferry. So this is our adventure starting for the day. I'm gonna go over and join everybody and get on the bus. Uh, it is a little bit uh, less than $2 to go to Managua, and that's what we have to do. We have to take the regular Leon to Managua express shuttle, the Uka bus that takes us to the Uka terminal. This is where it gets tricky. That part's easy, and you see me talk about that a lot on the channel, and I've shown it a little bit, it is very, very simple. Once we were in Managua, though, that we had to get another bus to take us to the ferry, and you can't do that from the same terminal. You have to go somewhere else. So there, we had to catch a taxi, uh, which is always taxis at the Uka terminal, uh, uh, that take us to the uh, the the main bus terminal with the big buses that go even farther afield. Now, I always have to mention when we're getting on the bus, the Uka bus in Leon. One of my favorite things about riding public transportation is getting all the food that they sell at the bus stations, that they sell on the bus itself, that they sell along the road. Uh, just a lot of fun. We didn't we didn't get anything really special today. We just got some uh, plantain chips and yucca chips. I did, however, catch some video of. Um, of them getting the, the, the way that they prepare uh, the plantain or yuca chips here. If you ask for it, if they say con chili, uh, they give you a coleslaw and they give you a, a, a picante, a, a spicy, very thin uh, pepper sauce that they put on. You get that in a bag. And, and I like it. I would eat it that way, except um, if, you, if you don't eat it all at once, it gets soggy and uh, it's very messy. And the last thing I want on a bus is any kind of mess. Nicaraguans seem to be much more adept at handling that than me. For me, oh, I would just be covered in food all day and very unhappy so I just get the dry chips that aren't quite as good but still quite yummy uh, so we did that <clears throat> and then a woman was selling some some cheesecakes on the bus and that's like it's a it's a kind of thin but tough bread with uh, sugar and cheese on it very thin and it's a little bit like a Danish sort of thing but but tougher I grabbed some of that just because uh, she was trying very hard to sell them uh, and, uh, and we had a good a really good comfortable bus ride. Um, I did have a metal post sticking into my back for much of the ride and I still feel it the next day. But other than that, it's pretty good. We had so we have to take a taxi over to the other uh, uh, terminal for uh, four of us. It was 200 cord, which is um, about five dollars. It is a bit of a drive, so uh, I don't feel bad about that price at all, especially in Managua. So that was actually pretty good. The other bus terminal, this is my first time ever using the main bus terminal in Managua, and it was quite interesting, um, I found, because I'm used to the Uka, which is all these mini buses and the way that they handle it. And it's not totally different, but they're using really big, uh, much more luxury style buses than, um, than I've used other places. And uh, it, was, it was really interesting because we, um, it's a bigger terminal with like a bigger set of restaurants and stuff. It feels a little bit more like a European bus station. I mean, it's clearly not, but it has a little bit more of that feel to it. Uh, and uh, lots of different destinations and these giant buses, um, more like a Greyhound in the US. Uh, uh, and so they, they just told us where to go. We got on the bus and you pay on the bus in this case, you just, you're just you able to just get on. You don't have to buy tickets ahead of time. It's really convenient as long as you know to do it. Um, and I'm not sure exactly how much it costs. I'm gonna do my best to find out and put it in the notes, but uh, not expensive at all. And that was incredibly comfortable uh, so easy and took and it stopped just a couple places um, like in Rivas and then San Jorge but it was fast and efficient and uh, really nice so we left at about 10 o'clock in the morning and we were in San Jorge about 4 45 that is a pretty long day but for just a couple dollars and it is going a long way and you do have to do the transfer in Managua it all adds up and it's going to take a little bit of time no matter what you do it was pretty good and we were happy with the entire trip and the decision to do that. So everything worked out great. Uh, the last ferry is between 5.30, 5.45, somewhere around there. So we were 
feeling a little bit of panic, but we did actually have enough time, not a problem. Uh, and we got onto the last ferry uh, at the port of San Jorge. And I should note, Rivas is a cool little city that I've not spent any time in. That is, at some point, we're gonna be doing some episodes from Rivas, because I really wanna do that. San Jorge is a suburb of, of Rivas, and it's, it's really the port of Rivas, uh, and it is a freshwater Lake Nicaragua port. It is the biggest port on the entire lake, for whatever reason. Um, it is uh, the only really big active ferry terminal. It's got big ferries. They put trucks on them, um, and uh, it, it when times are good and the economy is booming, it can go to many of the other ports, San Carlos, which is far in the southeast, uh, Moyagalpa and uh, San Jose on the island, Granada in the north, all of those can ship to each other by sea, uh, which is really interesting that there's inland shipping in Latin America in this way. Like the whole thing's really interesting and cool, but San Jorge is the biggest of all those ports. Uh, so, and still not very big, but way upgraded, I have to mention, um, from the last time we were there. Uh, last time it was just, you got into the port, you walked along and you got on the boat. Now, much like other places in the country, they have added uh, parks and restaurants and all kinds of stuff inside. And for Americans, it actually costs a dollar to get into the port area. Now, if you're a local, you just walk in, uh, but it's controlled. And for foreigners, I shouldn't say Americans, anyone who isn't Nicaraguan, it is a dollar to go into the port zone. And uh, then the ferry is 50 cord, which is about a dollar 40. Uh, so it's so cheap and the ride takes an hour and a half. Um, but uh, very, very affordable. Uh, but if you do want to just hang out in that port area and enjoy the amenities and the views and all that, you do have to pay a dollar, but a great way to support the public transportation system uh, either way. Uh, but San Jorge as a village is actually a really nice little town. I'm not sure what drives people to live there other than easy access to the port uh, if you have businesses in the area, if you're in the logistics business. Um, but there are some beautiful houses. It is actually a really cute village with some interesting stuff. I'd like to spend some time exploring San Jorge, which everyone skips because it's just the spot you stay if you miss the ferry or the spot you stay while you're waiting for your next thing or whatever. Like no one goes to San Jorge, but it's actually a neat little town. It may not have any attractions other than being on the lakefront and some beautiful stuff there. And, and now it has the port. So maybe it's growing in popularity, but uh, I can't believe how gorgeous some of the houses are for a kind of out of the way unknown little village. All right, I'm back. Hopefully we didn't have too much problem with the video. When I stopped it, the uh, GoPro actually crashed on me. And uh, when I turned it back on half a day later, it said it was repairing the files. So fingers crossed that we didn't lose anything. It said it was able to repair. We are now at a different hotel and uh, we'll tell about that tomorrow. I'm gonna real quick turn this camera around because it's a beautiful sunset here. And uh, you can just see the sun going down over Lago Nicaragua. So, so gorgeous out here on the side of a volcano in the jungle by a pool with cabanas. This is a pool bar, it's not open right now, but I'll just show it real quickly. Let's give you guys a taste of where we're gonna be the next few days. Anyway, uh, so we got on the ferry. The ferry ride was fantastic. Now the ferry is supposed to, I'm, I'm, there's gonna be some overlapping information here because I had to record these so far apart. So I apologize and I'll do my best to edit. So the ferry cost 50 cord, that's about $1.40 US, and it cost a dollar to get in. I mentioned that. We got onto the ferry. The last ferry goes around 5.30, maybe 5.45, but don't plan on that. The ferry ride was amazingly perfect. Now, Dominica said it was really rough waters, it had rough waves, and it was very hard to... For me, the ferry was smooth and comfortable. There were no bugs. When we did this eight years ago, the place was covered in bugs, and it was really, really uh, terrible. Like, it would get in your nose, and get in your ears, it was everywhere. And the kids wouldn't go up on the upper deck because they just didn't like it. They wanted to be uh, in the enclosed area, which was really warm and just, it was not super comfortable. So, if you can handle it, get to the open air on the top. It is so much nicer. We had very few people on the ferry. The ferry is really there for big trucks, not for people particularly. So uh, so it can go with very few people on it and it's not a big deal. And that's what subsidizes it and keeps it so affordable. Uh, and really even, even natives are able to it, take it all the time, right? Those who live here from here working at local rates, at $1.40, that's very affordable uh, to, to be able to take it. So Nicaraguans themselves use this as regular transportation, and they have to, right? They're completely dependent on it because there's no bridge, there's no airport, there's no nothing. You have to 
use it, right? Um, so it's a really important connection, uh, the ferry and the other boats that go back and forth, um, and it's important to keep it affordable, and that's one of the reasons why we can't really complain about the extra dollar just to get into the port, which helps pay the port fees to keep the, while well, the ferry is paid for other ways, the port still has a lot of operating costs, and honestly, no big deal. So uh, glad that they're able to do that and, and make it so accessible that people are really able to do it. Uh, and now the boat ride is supposed to take about an hour and 20 minutes. Ours took about an hour and 50 minutes. It was quite a bit longer uh, because supposedly it was rough, rough waters. I didn't notice at all. I thought it was the most comfortable ride. I was so happy uh, with how nice it was. After my memory of last time, I was like, oh, I don't want to do this. And then it was just great. But Dominica was clinging to the side and couldn't picture anything but the boat capsizing uh, because she gets both seasick and panicky in the water. And a lot of people here do not know how to swim, so that's additionally scary as well. For those who don't know, Lago Nicaragua has an average depth of 13 meters with a maximum depth of 45 meters. It's not the deepest of lakes. It is only one third the depth of Lago uh, of Laguna de Apoyo and only one seventh the depth of Lago Atitlan in Guatemala, which is and both of which are way smaller. If you watch uh, the This is Nicaragua episode on Laguna de Apoyo, which is at the time that I'm recording this, the only episode that there is, uh, we show a shot where you can see Laguna de Apoyo and in the distance, it, just beyond it, there's a strip of land with a city on it, that's Granada or the Gran Sultana, and beyond that is this giant expanse of water that looks like an ocean, that's Lago Nicaragua. The deepest point, I don't know where it is, but it is not anywhere in the part that the ferry goes because the ferry is going from uh, one, two of the narrowest points, um, <laughs> that doesn't make any sense, two of the closest points to make for one of the narrowest crossings. Uh, and so it's probably extremely shallow, pr probably way below even the average. In many cases, if the boat was to capsize, the boat would just hit the, hit the ground and be sticking out and you'd just cling to it. So it's probably not as dangerous as it seems, but you don't want to bank on that, right? Anyway, so for me, it was an incredibly comfortable ride, um, and I didn't even notice the time passing, and the sunset was fantastically beautiful. Uh, we didn't get food or anything on there, but in the past, I know they sold drinks and stuff. I didn't see that this time, but I didn't go looking for it. Um, and of course, you can bring things on. Uh, so it was dark when we got to the other shore. Now, this is something you got to know. There are two ports that it can go to. There's on the mainland. Currently, it only goes, and for as long as I can remember, it only goes from San Jorge at Rivas. Uh, it used to go to the port of Granada as well. And I have seen the ferries there long ago, but not for a very long time. Um, now it is only to uh, uh, San Jorge, which is the nearest point on land. So it's a very short crossing. If you did it from Granada, it'd be much longer, much, much, much longer. Uh, so, but on, on the island, it has two different ports. One is San Jose del Sur, which is on the south end and kind of, it's in an area where there's just, there's very little tourist infrastructure. Uh, it must be there because it's just a great spot to offload heavy equipment or something. The other one is Moyagalpa. That is the main settlement. It is by far the biggest point of population on all of Ometepe. It is in the western edge, um, and it's actually the closest to San Jorge of the ports. There is a closer point, but it has no port. I think it's like a sandbar, so you can't land there or anywhere near it. Uh, the ferries are not super deep drafts, but they, they're real ferries, right? They have a draft. Uh, so Moya Galpa is where you always want to go, right? It's where you're going to be able to get a taxi. It's where you're going to be able to get a restaurant. It's where there's going to be hotels by the port, all that. We ended up on a boat that went to San, Ho San Jose. I don't know if that was because it was supposed to go there initially and we got on the wrong boat or just didn't know, um, or if it switched because of the rough waters. Uh, I don't know, but we ended up getting off at San Jose, which was not where we were expecting, so we couldn't walk to hotels. It seems like there would be hotels at San Jose, and there are, but not many and none available. We walked all over, everything was, they weren't even, they didn't have their lights on. Like, I'm sure somewhere there was one that if you knew where to go, you could have found, but there was nothing. Like, there was seriously a problem, and no restaurants. There's nowhere to eat, nor to, there is no tourist infrastructure, or extremely little. Um, and we're gonna talk about that on the Ometepe episode coming up tomorrow, right? Um, but uh, uh, it's not the big tourist center that you may think it is. And so you need to be aware that getting off at like San Jose or just randomly showing up somewhere on the island, you may have some challenges. Um, Moya Galpa has hotels you can walk to, restaurants that are open, things going on, people on the streets, lots of, lots of stuff, taxis everywhere. So that's way easier to deal with and more comfortable. So that's where you wanna go. If you're in San Jose, be prepared. There may not even be taxis around. We had to find someone at a pulperia, asked him, and he went and called someone and then couldn't get them. And they took a bicycle somewhere to go get a taxi and then had the taxi come get us and then take us to Moyagalpa because we had gotten off. We looked around. We tried to find a hotel there and we're out of luck. 
We then went to Moyagalpa, got dropped off at a hotel that we thought we wanted to use. The price was way too high and the place was just honestly not that nice. Like it was okay if we had to stay there, it would not have been a problem, but we were not happy and it was just way too expensive. And so we walked up a little bit, looked at a couple of hotels, were not impressed at all. Uh, went, finally went to dinner um, and I recorded that for you guys. So I'm gonna include that right now. This is the Blue Corner restaurant in Moya Galpa Ometepe. This is the Caprizi salad with basil stalks on top. It was quite tasty, great way to start the meal. Marcella went for the veggie quesadilla, which she said was very good. It looked quite delicious with the pico de gallo there and crema. This is the vegetarian burrito. This is what I had, and this was absolutely excellent. I want to go back and get this again. Dominica went for curry, which she's always looking for. Very few restaurants have curry here, and that one was quite good. Chris got a traditional hamburger and fries. He said that was quite good. So uh, good selection of menu here, good vegetarian options, but plenty of different things. You know, show the bill here so you can see all the prices, but this came out to 1,020. Now notice there is a 90, 930 then a 90. That's the propina or the tip. So 1,020 or $27.87. Here's the menu so you can see all the prices and the and the selection of food. But this was very affordable. Consider this is an extremely touristy location. This is a touristy restaurant in the middle of Moyagalpa, the biggest settlement. So this is on the high end for pricing, not the highest, but it is on the high end. And for four people to have a full meal, plus that Caprizi, notice was no one's meal. That was additional, plus we had some drinks all for under $30, not bad at all. Here's the restaurant and the outside is actually where the majority of the seating is. We wanted to be inside because there's a lot of stuff going on in the street, but a beautiful outdoor location in the middle of the village, highly recommended and a really great price, especially for vacation. And dinner was fantastic. We really enjoyed eating there. Um, the food was was so good and the service was good and the like everything, it just really, really nice. So I'm glad we're able to show that and bring that to you. Um, um, I would go there again, no question. From there, while we were at dinner, we decided what we were doing uh, for our hotel. We managed to book rooms at Hefziba, which was about a kilometer away. So we decided to, to hoof it, um, left dinner, took our backpacks and walked uh, the kilometer out to the south to Hefziba, uh, and, uh, which of course they didn't even know that our booking had gone through. So it was, of course, they're like, oh, we have to get a room ready. But uh, they, were, they were nice and, and everything was fine. Um, the internet though, absolutely terrible. So it was late, all we wanted to do was go to bed. We got in and there was internet, so I was able to respond to like emails and stuff, but it was like 0.5 megabits was all we could get. And the Wi-Fi, I wasn't very strong in the rooms so while there was just a tiny bit there was it was enough for messages there was not enough to upload anything I didn't get a single video out the entire time we were there uh, and that that made me worry quite a bit that we were gonna have problems um, but I did I did try to, to get some things done I did have some stuff recorded I wanted to keep you guys up to date as best as possible and that didn't really work like I had hoped uh, but the room was comfortable there was air conditioning it's a pretty space and I filmed some of that tomorrow morning uh, and we'll show that to you so that is our adventure on getting to Ometepe to start our adventure today's tuesday we're going to be here on the island wednesday thursday and then friday morning heading back to uh to uh, managua where dominica needs to be doing shopping with paul for uh the uh for the hotel and for the house um we just have we have these regular big shopping trips to managua that just have to be done and um, uh, Marcella is heading to Managua. She's got to spend some time there, but she has to be back on Saturday to the beach because we all have a big event uh, out in Pona Loya, not in Las Bonitas, but in Pona Loya on Saturday. So lots going on, very crazy uh, week. And if you'd like to sponsor the channel, you may do so by buying me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Al Miller. That helps me so much make this show. Remember to like and subscribe, get down in the comments, talk about Ometepe, ask your questions, anything you want to know. We're going to show a lot more of this over the next couple days, and I will see all of you tomorrow.